Hey, I'm really not good enough. Well, the thing is, there's a pain of trying to be your best, to be perfect. And there's a pleasure of experiencing life being your best and striving to be better. And I think I might have a little tip. Well, I know I've got a little tip, a process that will help you find that and let go of I'm not good enough. I don't have to be a perfectionist anymore. Okay, have a listen after this. Hey, welcome, welcome to the Personal Development Unplugged podcast. So pleased you're here. Your time is valuable and precious. So what I would like to do is fill that time that you share with me with the most shiny golden nuggets to help improve your life, to get your goals, your wishes, your dreams to come to fruition quicker, bigger, better than you could ever imagine using your imagination, using hypnosis, using NLP, neuro linguistic programming, all of that, using all things of the mind, no brain hacks, but real solid processes to deconstruct what people do to become great and then find the processes that we can install that in ourselves to support you in your dreams and get what you really want in life. Anyway, who am I? I'm Paul, Paul Clough, and just going to have conversations with you in this podcast and get you thinking, but also share those processes because we're going to have so much fun. That's it. We're going to have fun for a change because we can sit down for a spell and have more fun than we can stand creating the world we want to live in and be the person we want to be in that world. The only limitation, the only limitation is your imagination. And you've got bucket loads, by the way, bucket loads. Have a listen. You really must. This is Personal Development Unplugged with Paul Clough. In simplicity, there is genius. In simplicity, there is genius. Hey, my friend, a longer podcast. It's all about, just like the title says, I'm really not good enough. And I know you're not good enough. Because we've talked about it before. You'll never, ever, ever be good enough. And I'll tell you for why. Tell you for why in a minute. Now, this may resonate with you, and it may not. I don't know. A lot of people, when they have the belief that I'm not good enough, and there's an awful lot of us around, because that seems to be a belief that generalizes from another belief. And we'll go through that nearer the end of the podcast. Give you a, a, I'll give you an example of a client of mine and my son. But anyway, this is the thing that I'm, it might resonate because I speak to clients and the clients say, oh, I have this belief I'm not good enough. And I would sometimes just say, well, do you have to be perfect, by the way? Are you a perfectionist? And the most, the most of them will say, yeah, yeah, I do. I have to be perfect. Everything I do. And see, when someone tells me that and they have the belief of I'm not good enough, I can see there's a wonderful thing your unconscious mind is doing in its its attempt to protect you from the pain of not being good enough, which is a conflict already, isn't it? I'm going to protect you from the pain of literally in going into an event or doing something in any context, protect you from that feeling of not being good enough by giving you the belief you're not bloody good enough. That's a conflict in itself because the two things are. And the feeling that you have with that, that feeling that I'm not good enough, not only the belief, but I get that feeling. And because of that, and this is where the the kicker comes in, because of that, you have to be your best. And it's not only your best, you have to be better than everyone else, don't you? Which is that thing of I have to be perfect. Everything has to be perfect or I don't do it. 
I hide. Because if I hide, I'm still protecting you. If I'm your best friend, I'm your unconscious mind. If I can pull you away from that so you don't do it, well, you won't get that feeling of I'm not good enough. But guess what? You bloody feel not good enough when you're hiding from it. Because you, deep inside, you, you, you can't fudge yourself. You know it doesn't feel good. It's the same bloody feeling, isn't it? Same bloody feeling of not feeling good enough when you're not doing it. And when, you're try and, and when you're trying to be a perfectionist, which, by the way, you never will be, it's so bloody tiring, isn't it? Putting so much effort into making sure that you're good enough. But the thing is, you never will be. You never will be good enough because you can't be perfect. And one of my meta views on this little note, I said, you know, there's a pain of being your best or trying to be your best, but there's also the pleasure of being your best when you know that you've done your best. And that's the difference. So does that mean, does that mean if I've got this belief, if I'm not good enough, which means something below that is going on, but also have this pain of being a perfectionist and, and know every time I look at the bloody thing I've done, I know it's not perfect. So that only bloody reinforces I'm not good enough, doesn't it? Because you've done your best. But you know yourself, you haven't been perfect, so you, you're not good enough. So are you doomed? Are you doomed forever? Are you doomed for failing? No. You see, the effect of failing can be sort of good if you view it in the right way because what does striving do i'm striving to be my best which means i have an intention to be my best which means i've got the confidence in trying i don't like the word striving but striving i love striving striving to be my best and when i do that i will be the best version of me at this moment in time maybe that thing i was trying to do is a little elusive. Maybe I haven't quite got all the skills. But by being my best, I can learn from that. So that's not failing. You know, NLP presuppositions, useful assumptions. There is no such thing as failure. There's only feedback. And when we use failure as a feedback mechanism, we learn. And the next time, we go a little bit better. And we can stretch and strive a little bit more. Because we're always being our best. And that's where the pleasure comes from. So maybe I didn't quite get that, but I'm really so proud of myself because I did my best. And that really gets results, doesn't it? Because sometimes when you strive to be your best, you can achieve more than you thought. Still not perfect. Because if it was perfect, by the way, it'd be bloody boring. It really would be boring, wouldn't it? It'd be so boring. Oh, everything I do is so good. No reason to be any better. Of course there is. Personal development unplugged. It's all about getting that raw sense of I can do a little bit more each day. A little bit more each time I do something. And it will be good enough. I don't know why I did that. Good enough. For those who couldn't see it, I did inverted commas in with that funny hand signal. Yeah. Because you can be proud of who you are and what you did. Knowing you can be proud of yourself, you're going to get better in the future. And that, to me, feels so good. You're recognising that, in fact... That was good enough. Because if you've done your best, you can't do any more. And if you've done your best, that's good enough, isn't it? That's not, oh, that's good enough. No, that's good enough. There's enough good in that. Because I can't do any better. I worked as a, co with a, co uh, as a coach for this, this lady. She was top, top, top notch in her job. And she was still struggling with I'm not good enough, even though she'd excelled in every time she went to school, every, you know, every 
certificates she took. She took all exams, medical exams. She did this and this, that. And she was top, but she still didn't feel good enough because her unconscious mind wouldn't let her feel good enough because it wasn't perfect, because she had to be perfect. Because you know why? Below that belief of I'm not good enough was I'm stupid. And her unconscious mind didn't like that feeling of being stupid in front of people. So it said to, to her, of a sort, by, by those behaviours and feelings it gave her, no, you're going to have to be the better than that. We're going to have to strive to be perfect because if we're perfect, no one can call us stupid. And I just said to her, well, what would happen if that belief and that feeling was to disappear? I said, well, that would be marvellous. That would be absolutely awesome. But I said, if that disappeared, though, and in its place, you use all that bloody energy to access what you know and just do your best. How would you, how would you have done? And she said, when, you, when I think about it, I'd have done everything I've done already. I'd be proud of myself because I should be. I should be proud of what I've done. And I wasn't. And now I am. Everything changed. It was just that little reframe. And her unconscious mind goes, mm, yeah, I get it now. Alternative. All that energy, like when we're in the flow, when we're doing the stuff that we love, because she loved doing this stuff, when she's in the flow, it was as if whew, time stood still. She just did the best. And she had that pleasure of being her best. And so can you. And the thing is, Sometimes it's just recognising that conflict. And you recognise, well, things will not be perfect. My son, I won't tell you which one, I've got three. They'll know. He had to be perfect. He did so much. Tried to be so into everything he did, whether it was his health, whether it was his work. Everything had to be perfect. And he would come, come back. He used to live with me. And when he lived with me, he'd come back, oh, Dad, it was a terrible day. It was the matter. Well, everything was going so well. I did this, 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 and this, and this. He said, and then I ruined my diet because I ate a little bit of a hamburger. Not a lot, just a little bit. And that ruined everything. We go, whoa. What about all that other stuff? You said, yeah, no, it doesn't count, though. And then over the years... Because initially I just said, well, if that was 100%, what would happen if you tried to to only only achieve 90%? Now, no, most people find it difficult to achieve 90% unless they put their mind to it. Sometimes we just drift down a little bit. You say, well, I suppose I could do 90%. And I knew he was going to achieve that because he would come back and go, 93% today, Dad, I smashed it. I had a little blip, but I smashed it. He did the same day. It was exactly the same type of day. And it was chalk and cheese. One where he stayed motivated, one where he was demotivated, he didn't want to do it anymore. And he's since changed it again. He's now gone on to an 80% because he feels when he's doing 80%, he can allow for the fudges now and again. But he always knows that 80% will keep him at that level. And then he can spur. He can do a little bit more, but he'll always be there. And because he aims at 80%, I guarantee you, he's always hitting 85 to 90. Because he doesn't rest at 80. It's this or something better but I'm going to do just a little bit more than 80. And then he's always doing it. And more importantly, I think, he's enjoying it. Because he's using all these skills. And you see what happens is, and this is the trick that he understands now, but didn't then. One day you get your 80% and you might think, hey, that's not so good. But that 80% filled out his experience because there was no pressure on him so he was learning and enjoying things and when you enjoy things with, with a positive emotion you learn better you do better and you've got more energy so 
a week later when he was going for his 80%. Well, that 80% was actually not the same 80% as in the past. It was a bigger 80%, if you can get bigger 80%. You know, compared to the other 80%, it was 85%, but it still was 80 for him. So he's still getting there, but he's still improving every day, stretching and enjoying it, having the pleasure of being his best. So sometimes it's, you know, we've talked before, how we can simply, consciously and unconsciously, recognize a conflict. You know, when we say to ourselves, well, you know, just recognize, okay, I've got this feeling. I've got this belief of I'm not good enough. Okay. I'm not going to do anything about it. Not yet. But I just want to ask myself a question. And when I ask myself a question, you're asking your unconscious mind. I wonder, what are the better ways? What better ways could I use, employ? Could I believe? What better beliefs could I have? What better emotions could I have? What better skills could I employ? The ones I've got that I'm not using. And what better behaviours? What uh, physiology would be better if I acted as if? All that stuff. What would happen if I used that and let go of that? either overwhelm that anxiety. I wonder if I could do that. What results would I get? Would it be better? And you can see by just thinking about that, you, you know it's going to be better. But just to reinforce that, you go, well, let's remember a few times in the past. And it doesn't matter what context, by the way. That would be the same context of the issue you're thinking about. What counterexamples of my, in my life can I find? And a counterexample is a time in the past when you were enjoying life, you were being your best and you were maybe just in the flow and you were getting it. And if you can, write them down. Always write these buggers down. Write them down, you can come back to them, but when you write them down, you've got to look at that bloody memory. You've got to form the words in your head. You've got to write those words that are in your head on that paper. Look at them again. Do they match the words that you, you were thinking? And do that, those words match the picture you just made? And when you've got all of that, you just relived it in every modality, you see, because you get that feeling again. And as you get that feeling of that, when you're just in the flow doing with just like that carefree attitude, not careless or anything like that, but you just, I do care, but I'm just doing it. What belief did you have about yourself? I bet it's got something like, I can do this, I've got this, we're okay. And you say to your unconscious mind, you did that with me. Which one is better than the old way of thinking I'm not good enough with that fear, the anxiety, the overwhelm, or that one? And if you do two, three or four of those counterexamples, it's going to like tip the balance. It's going to flood over the old way and your unconscious mind is going to go, oh, bloody hell. Let's give it a go. And I think you'll find just naturally things will change. Naturally, your unconscious mind will start to do different things. And the thing is, if you go to hashtag three, I think it's 330, I talked about a new positive mindset. So you might, might want that in there as well, just to give you that oomph. And with that, if you go to my uh, free hypnosis, the track's there. You look for hashtag 330.1, which will be the new positive mindset, and you go through hypnosis. So listen to that and do that. And you'll find, and that makes a difference, how do you get those free, free hypnosis? Well, you, if you've been here before, you know, but I'll repeat it for someone who's new. It's paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast. Sign up, you get 60 free NLP and hypnosis free tracks they're all free complimentary is a better way about it putting it speak english fluffy and you go there get the track have a listen now if these things are too big by the way if you think this thing is really giving me you know i've, I've done this because this will help whatever happens but if you find this is an issue that's a little bit just a little bit too overwhelming for you you need a hand because sometimes we do which is why i do therapy Go and see a therapist. Do one-to-one. -one. 
In my view, you get a, hip, a great hypnosis or hypnotist. You get Master Prac NLP, Master Prac Timeline Therapy. You get someone who can get all those three skills. Man, you're going to get done and seen and sorted really, really quickly. Two, three sessions. Boom. And you can just eliminate it because you go to the root cause. Because if it's something, you know, sometimes it's just a reframe like I did with that, that lady. Or maybe we, I've worked with other people and you just need to go a little bit more and get unconsciously to the root cause so your unconscious mind can learn at the unconscious level and then make those changes. Because it's the learnings which allow you to be free. So learnings will mean you don't need the emotions because that emotion is just the trigger. Well, once we've learned it, we don't need that trigger anymore. And then we can access the new stuff and a, a therapist will take you all through that. And, you know, if you, I think if you, if you look at one of my earlier podcasts, and it's way, way earlier, what to expect from a therapist, I think it's called, that gives you an idea. I've also got one or two other ones, which is about my love of NLP and hypnosis. You can hunt through those in the back catalogue. But please do that. Have a think. Get those, whatever you do, get those counter examples going. Because it's so bloody doable. It really is. Because there's always a better way, an easier way. And just because it's, well, let's call it a more simple way. Because sometimes it's easy and simple, but you put, put I'll say that again, you have to put effort in. It's not about just knowing. It's the action you take on the information that you know. Doing what you know and knowing what you do. Mastery. And then you will have the pleasure of being your best and then knowing that you'll be a little bit better every day. Because as we say, what, whatever you think you are, you're actually more than that. All you have to do is find it. I hope I sort of made sense there. I just want you to be your best. Be the best version of yourselves. So if you have please share this with with people just give them an idea because as you share it with people you'll you'll realize how much you took in or maybe there's bits that you miss so you have to come back maybe you've made some notes on this so you can just go through those to refresh your memory to start doing those counter examples to thinking of new ways and with all the other back catalogs there's things you can imagine how you want to be and things like that It'll be great for you. So please do share. And if you share the podcast with people, that would be super awesome too. And remember, just as you look on that, that thing that you either watching or listening on, there's always a subscribe button. If you'd have just pressed that once, that would be awesome. Because that'll just help the podcast grow in its sort of popularity. But it would get it to more minds. Put it that way, more minds. And if we can get more minds thinking that they can be a little bit better every day it will make such a difference to them to you because you will infect and affect them and they will do the same to you and others the ripples of change will go so far and wide that you'll never know how far they go but they will so please do that have more fun than you can stand and if you want to give me if there's something in here you say i didn't understand or can you just twist it a little bit Paul because there's a different type of topic I'd like to to, uh, to do a little bit more with send me an email personal no it's feedback feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com lots of things there but if you just go to the website personaldevelopmentunplugged.com there's a contact and all that stuff you can do it any way you like okay have more fun than you can stand because it's time to fly bye bye now see you later Warning, you are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.